once they've got it out of the ATM, that's one thing, but they don't want to have to always deal in cash. They want to have to be able to, or they want to be able to put that money back into the system and, and use it in an electronic fashion. The system didn't work completely well because there were some banks compromised overseas. But at the end of the day, they tried to cash out in the United States, and some of them got caught. Release some photographs, apparently, of these uh, perpetrators. It's a natural progression. We fully anticipate, as we get more sophisticated, that the criminals will get more sophisticated as well. And so we're just watchful. The hackers obtained a list of prepaid MasterCard debit cards from an unidentified source. Okay? Now once they had that, what they did was they attacked an Indian processor that was responsible for those cards. And they were able to raise the overall withdrawal limits to either a high amount or an unlimited amount. Then they distributed that information to who I would call the cashers. Those were the people that were going to go execute the transaction in the ATM machines themselves. It appears that MasterCard was notified based on uh, a variety of transactions in a densely populated area. And what happened was MasterCard notified the Secret Service quite quickly, which led to today's indictment. We don't know exactly how many people participated, but it appears that it was very global in nature, including the US, across Asia, Japan, we know was, uh, was also part of it. Well, unlike Money in the Vault, Data is distributed all over a variety of networks. And in this case, the bank wasn't even compromised. It was the processor. And whatever was used to obtain those initial prepaid MasterCard debit cards was actually the thing that was compromised. Okay.